In this tutorial, we shall see how we can put up a socket connection between a client process and a server process. And we will see how there's a difference between the two classes, the server socket and the socket class. So let's go right in and just rephrase what you already have been told one time. We're going to make a welcome socket, the server socket class in the server side, and then we're going to make a connection socket, which is actually created by a method named accept. On the client side, we'll create a socket, client socket here on the IP address of the server and the port pump. I expect that you can create a beam project already done here and we want the Java main class the first class is TCP client here and I immediately create my server class also a Java main class First thing first, server socket. Like this. Now let's look here. We need to add an import because the server socket class is inside the package java.net as you can see up here and when I create such a socket something might go wrong and it might throw an exception so I need to handle that too I add a throw clause this is solution and now it's more or less ready except one thing we must actually state which port number this server socket will be created on and I decide it's port number 6789. Then we make a little unusual thing from Java and other programs. Put up a loop here. This loop is a little bit special because you say while true and it will loop forever. Inside this loop, I will look at the methods provided by the welcome socket. And there are many methods here, but uh, happily the first one is the one I'm looking for, the accept method. Set method will listen for somebody knocking on the door, uh, making a, trying to make a connection to the welcome socket. And then, if that happens, it will return, as you can see from here. It's a return method here. And it will return a server, not a server socket object, but a socket object. That is the method I'm looking for here. Type. This is my connection socket that I need. I get some more things to add. Like this. Right now, I made the first step of the TCP server, but let's go immediately to the TCP client here. In the TCP client, it is a little bit different. You just need a client socket. So when I do this, let's see, we can't find it as usual, add something, and now it looks like it's more or less finished, but it is not. We need two things here, as we can also see if we navigate uh, the source. 
here there are several constructors as we can see scroll a little bit down you can see here's the one i'm looking for the constructor with two parameters the host which can be uh, the name of the host or it can be uh, the ip address notice it's a string and then an integer for the port node. Let's go back again. Now, who shall I contact? Well, the most easy thing to do right now is to use the local host. Uh, the local host has this port number here. But you might as well also just write local host. Yeah, that's also possible. Now the port number I'm going to use is the same one as the server program is using, 6789. When such a thing happens and I try to connect a host, then that can happen uh, many things. For example, the host might not be known. Or something can go wrong. When I try to do this opening, it might actually exist, but something goes wrong with the connection. So I have to add unknown host exception and IO exception here. Now I'm ready. Happily, I can start to run this. So I'll go up and try to run the client here. Now, uh, unfortunately, when I try to run the client, I immediately get an error. Well, it should not be a surprise, this error. It says connection refused. So it's a connection exception. That is uh, because nobody's running and ready to receive my things. This is an IO exception. The reason is that we should always have that the server program is running first before we contact it. Let's try to run this one here instead. Shift F6, I'll remember that next time. Uh, yeah, when we do this, sometimes this system can uh, pop up and block it. I just say allow access. running. Go back to the client and let's run the client. We can see it was built successful. They're both running but I have actually no idea what is going on. I think I will uh, do some manual uh, informative printouts here. state that the client connected to the server. If it reads the sentence, then that should be fine. And there's a TCP server here. If I go inside the while true loop, and then I call this method here, then we can say that the server process is running. It's ready, but blocked. Waiting for the client to go in and activate the accept method. If this happened, then of course it is uh, successful. Let's go down here and stop the process running here because I'll make some changes so I need to run it again. Go 
go to the TCP client, start it, and let's see what we saw here. First of all, we first notice that the server is ready but blocked. It's fine. Then we notice the client connected to server. And finally, we can see because of while true loop, server is ready but blocked. This is more or less correct, except there's a misspelling here. If I run the client again, now we can see the same thing happens again and again. So I can sit here and run the program here. And it's always like this, client activate your server, and then again, server is ready, but blocked, ready for a new a client trying to connect to it. This is the basic core of how to put up the connection. If I should be very strict, I could say that we need to close circuit. It's always nice. Like this and the server side too here. Of course not inside the white true but uh, outside the white true. does not go so well because to say I will never reach it. This is of course the case uh, because the, the froze exception here cannot hit this one and the while true will always stand here and loops. So I think I'll just uh, erase that again. Fine. That's about it. Next step would go in and see how shall we put up the circuit communication so we can send some messages from the client to the server.